Okay, so let's get started. So this chapter is about uh, forces, okay, how to deal with forces. Um, I already introduced uh, forces in last lecture. And we need to know when we deal with motion, what causes the motion. And if you want to change the state of a state of an object, meaning if an object is at rest, if you want to bring it to a motion, then you need to do something to that. Okay. Likewise, if an object is already moving, and if you want to stop it, you need to do something, and that something is the force. Okay. So force is an agent that changes the state of an object state from rest to motion and from motion to rest. So what causes motion is the force. Okay, Force causes the motion. And Newton's law tells us what force is. So Newton's law gives us the definition of force. Okay, So force is an agent that changes the state of an object. In absence of force, okay, if you don't apply force to an object, what happens? When there is no force, if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest forever. If the object is, it is moving, then it will move in a straight line forever in absence of force. That's the Newton's first law. Okay? That means we need force to change the state. In absence of force, the state remains same. <clears throat> in very basic way, we can define force as push or pull. So applying force means you're either pulling or pushing an object. So force always acts on an object. Okay? So applying force means you're applying force on an object. You are doing something to the object. And every force involves an agent. So something must be applying the force, whether it's a person or pulling an object with a rope or the gravity pulling the object down. So there must be some agent that is applying the force. Like in this picture, you see this person's hand is the agent. Okay? And the hand is applying force on the ball. So force is a vector quantity. We saw this in the lab a uh, couple of weeks ago, we dealt with addition of force, and we saw that force is a vector quantity. You cannot add force like ordinary number. You need to use vector rule to add forces. So the general symbol for force is F with this arrowhead. This arrowhead tells us that this is a vector quantity. And this F tells us the magnitude of the force. So there are two types of forces. One is contact force, and the other one is long range force. A contact force or contact forces are those forces that act on an object by touching the object. So if I push the table, I need to touch the table to apply that force. Okay, so any force that needs the contact is the contact force. Like when you hit a baseball with bat, so the baseball, the bat has to touch the baseball in order to exert the force. Okay? So this force is contact force. So there is another force called long range force. In long range force, 
the agent that exerts the force does not need to touch the object for example gravity okay so the gravity is pulling this cup down without touching the object so gravity is long range force likewise if you have a magnet if you bring some uh, magnetic objects near that let's say uh, uh, some nail or something near that the magnet does not need to touch the objects to pull it okay it can pull it without touching so magnetic force is a long range force so without physical contact is long range and the force applied by touching the object is contact force so how do we represent force we represent force by an arrow because it's a vector so a vector is always represented by an arrow so in this case let's say you are applying force on a car or something a box or something okay you're pushing the box so what you do is you represent this box by a point or dot okay and then um, put this arrow the, the tail of the arrow on the the dot okay not the the head of the arrow like that oops i don't know why it's doing that so we have this object we don't draw the vector like that we always touch the object with the tail of the arrow okay so the force is applied to the right so then you need to point the arrow to the right like that always the tail touches the object so the force the amount of force you apply is proportional to the length of this arrow for example you are applying two forces let's say one is 50 newton and the other one is uh, 25 newtons then for 50 newton you will need to uh, draw twice as long arrow as 25 newton so if you draw or if you consider this to be 50 newton then 25 newtons needs to be half of that like that okay so don't draw the same size arrow for different amounts of forces okay so here uh, sometimes we can use the pictorial representation to show the force so here is actual pic picture of how we apply the force or how the person is applying the force and sometimes we can represent that force by this diagram okay this uh, arrow diagram vector diagram here the agent is the rope okay you may be considering the person to be the agent but that's not the case here agent means the object that is touching the the object in uh, under consideration the object under cons consideration here is this box okay we are applying force on the box so applying force on the box and what is applying force what agent is applying the force on the box you need to see what is what is the object that is um, touching the object okay in this case this rope is touching the object so the rope is the agent here not the person although the actual force is being exerted by the person but we need to consider the, the object that is touching the this box so this is for the long or uh, the contact force okay so here our object is box mark that with dot and then the force is this arrow okay which is the force of this rope not the force of the person although the force is being acted by the person but we still consider the force is being acted by the rope and then for the long range force this is the long range force uh, so this is the box and this force is being applied by the 
Earth, okay, by gravity. Okay, so we saw last time in the uh, lab that when you apply multiple forces, the sum of the multiple forces is given by the vector sum, okay, not the ordinary sum, but the vector sum. Let's say you have uh, 10 Newton on this part and then 10, uh, let's say 20 Newton on this part, you cannot add the force like the scalar quantity, like the or ordinary number. You cannot just say it's the sum of 10 Newton and 20 Newton. So that's not the right way to add the vectors. So you need to use vector addition. Okay, so this symbol or this, oh, this is vector addition. We'll learn about how to do that uh, in the next part, but it's not just like adding the numbers. Okay? And when you, are add, when you are applying a bunch of forces, you can replace all those forces by its resultant. So you're applying this force and you're applying this force. Okay? So you can just replace those forces by the single vector, which is the vector sum of the two forces. Okay, we'll see that when we solve the problem. Okay, so let's talk about different kinds of forces because we'll be dealing with all these different kinds of forces. The first one is weight. We talked about this uh, briefly last time. Weight is the force due to gravity. Okay, gravity or earth pulls the object and that force due to gravity is we call it weight which is different from mass. If you watch the lecture I posted last time, uh, I differentiate mass and weight, mass vs weight. Okay. So mass is the total amount of matter content in an object. Matter means like how much atoms or molecules it has. That tells us how heavy the object is. Okay. So that tells us the mass. But the weight here is by how much force the earth is pulling the object, the pull of the object, the pull of the earth on an object. In this case, um, the earth is the agent, although it's not actually touching the object, but because it's a long range force, okay, so long range force, so the earth is the agent. In, in case of long range force, the, the agent does not need to touch the object, unlike in the contact force. And in this example, you see, you throw the base of the, the basketball, and the basketball is at different uh, points here. No matter where the basketball is, this weight is always pointing down. Okay, and it's always same. Okay. You see the arrow size, it's all of same length okay. because we are dealing with the same basketball. And also the duration is also uh, is pointing down because the earth is pulling the object down. No matter what the trajectory of the ball is, its weight is always pointing down. Even when it's not moving, you see here at rest, the weight is pointing down. Or when it's ro rolling, still its weight is pointing down. Okay. Next force is spring force. So when you pull a spring, so you are pulling the spring in example B, uh, you're stretching the spring this way. This is the force you applied with your hand. And what the spring does is it tends to restore its original shape, okay? So you're pulling the spring to the right and the spring in turn pulls this uh, object back, okay? It tends to restore its original state. And that, that force, the force that the spring exerts to restore its original state is called spring force. Spring force is always in the direction 
opposite to the force with which we stretch the spring. If we, are, if we are stretching the spring this way, then the force exerted by the spring would be opposite to that this way. Okay? Likewise here, in the first example, we are compressing the spring. We are pushing the spring this way. So that's the force we are applying with our hand or this box or block. The spring force would be opposite to that. Okay, so this is the spring force. Spring force is the, the force exerted by the spring. in response to the force you apply. Next force is tension force. So when you are applying force through some kind of spring or, it's not spring, string or rope, the force exerted by the spring, no, not spring, sorry, string, I mean, string or rope is called the tension force. So when you pull the this slid with this rope, this, this rope exerts this tension force. Okay. Although something is pulling the rope here, but the active agent here is the rope because the rope is touching the object under consideration. Okay. So to draw the vector diagram, you denote this object with a dot mark and then the arrow points along the direction of the rope. Okay? If the rope is along this line, straight line, so that means the arrow would be along that line. So that's what it says. The direction of the tension force is always in the direction of the string or rope. Okay? And the next force is normal force. So when you put an object on some surface, the surface does not collapse. The reason for that is the, ob the surface exerts the opposite force on that object. Okay? That prevents the surface from collapsing. So when you put the book on the table, there's this weight force weight of this object pushing the table and the table in turn ex exerts the force in the opposite direction perpendicular to the surface okay in this direction and that force is the normal force so if i apply if i push a, a wall okay this is the wall if i push the wall with my hand in that direction the wall does not collapse okay because the wall exerts opposite force on my hand so this force is the normal force so normal force is exerted by the surface on the agent that is exerting the force okay this normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay. For example, if you have some kind of inclined surface like this, and you put a box on this inclined surface, okay. so this box will exert force on this inclined surface. The force would be pointing down, okay, which is the weight, because the gravity always pulls this object in vertically downward direction. It's not in not in this direction. So this weight is always very, very important point. It's always pointing vertically down. So that's the weight. And to keep this surface from collapsing, the surface also exerts a force on that box, which would be perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so this surface exerts that force perpendicular to the surface, which is called normal force. So normal force, again, is always perpendicular to the surface. 
no matter what kind of surface you have, let's say this kind of uh, vertical surface or this kind of horizontal surface, this normal force is perpendicular. So, normal force is often denoted by letter N, capital N with an arrowhead, the normal force is perpendicular here, normal force is perpendicular here, perpendicular to the surface. So, that is the normal force. Here you see the skier is an object, okay. this object is exerting this gravity force or weight on the surface and in turn this surface is exerting this perpendicular force on that object, okay, which is the normal force. So, with the arrow diagram you can see this is the normal force perpendicular to the surface. So, I wrote capital N here, uh, it says small n, but it is same. Okay? So, you can use either capital N or small n, both are fine. Uh, another force is friction, it is very common force. Friction is also exerted by surface. Okay? So, we saw normal force is exerted by surface, this surface on the object here in, exam in this example also. You see um, the normal force is exerted by this table surface. In the same way, friction is also exerted by surface, but in this case, the surface is, I mean the frictional force is parallel to the surface, not perpendicular. So, in case of normal force, the force is perpendicular to the surface. Okay? So, that is the force that is the surface, they are perpendicular. So, here is the surface, here is the force, so that is perpendicular. Okay? But in case of friction, the frictional force is parallel to the surface. So, there are two types of frictional force, one is kinetic friction and the other one is static friction. Kinetic friction is exerted by the surface when the object moves along that surface. So, you have some surface and let us say you are dragging a box or something on that surface. So, this surface will exert force on that box parallel to the surface okay? and kinetic friction is uh, and the friction force is always opposite to the direction along which the object moves or ten tends to move. So, in this case the object is moving this way, so that is the motion speed. So, the friction force would be opposite to that, so friction would be in this direction and friction force is denoted, denoted by small letter f, okay? not capital F, but small f. And if the box is moving, then the friction exerted on that box is called kinetic friction. So, kinetic friction is friction exerted on the object that is in motion and this again friction force is opposite to the duration of motion. Another kind of force uh, friction force is static friction. So, static friction is exerted on an object that is at rest that is yet to move or that is not moving. So, you are there is a big box here you are pushing the box but the box is not moving. So, you are trying to push the box this way, the box does not move because this floor exerts friction force on this box in opposite direction. So, friction force would be this way. This is your force, but the floor exerts box, the, the friction force on that box in the direction opposite to uh, the direction along which the box tends to move. So, this is static friction because it is not moving. So, kinetic friction is when the object is already moving, friction uh, static friction is exerted when the box is not moving or yet to move. Okay? So, F sub S is for static friction and F sub k is for kinetic friction. We will talk more about that in the next chapter.
So here is uh, here are the examples. So here, uh, the slit is already moving. That means the force, the kinetic flow force, here in this case is. I mean, the friction force in this case is kinetic friction. It's in the opposite direction to the motion. If it is moving this way, then the kinetic friction is that way. Here, the box is not moving, okay? And the force is exerted this way. So, the static friction would be opposite to the, this force, which is that way. Another force is drag force. Drag force is similar to the friction force. Okay, so drag force is exerted by either so, uh, either a gas or liquid. For example, if you um, drop a leaf or something in air, so the leaf moves down, and the air exerts this drag force in the opposite direction of the duration of motion. So, this is the drag force and this is due to the air. It could also be due to liquid. Okay? So, so, you have like water or something, some kind of liquid. If you drop um, a piece of uh, a heavy wood or something, a rubber cork or something, so it will move down and there would be a drag force on this object due to the liquid. So, here on that leaf, there is this down force width and there is also this drag force in the upward direction. Okay, so let's see, uh, one more force. Oh, by the way, um, in the problems, in most of the problems, We'll be neglecting this drag force, okay? Unless uh, the problem explicitly uh, mentions you need to consider the drag force. In general problems, we neglect this force. Okay, so last one is thrust. Thrust is the force that occurs when a jet or rocket engine expels gas molecules at high speed. So the rocket uh, expels these gas molecules at high speed and this thrust force is uh, exerted in direction opposite to the duration of these gas molecules. These gas molecules move down and the thrust is exerted up okay, in the up upward direction or opposite direction. So, that is the thrust force which provides the lift on a rocket or um, other kinds of uh, equipment. So, those are the forces that we will be dealing with. Any question on forces? So, these are also the forces, but uh, we won't be dealing with these forces in this uh, course. If you take physics 2, then physics 2 would be all about electric and magnetic forces. Okay? So, you'll be spending whole semester on electric and magnetic forces, but here we don't need to worry about that. Okay, let's look at this question. Uh, by the way, there is a quiz uh, today, so please take the quiz by the end of the day. Um, so, here, let's look at this question. There is a ball on this ramp. The ball is rolling and when the ball leaves the edge of the ramp, so when the ball is in air, what forces would be acting on that ball? So, let's read the options. The weight of the ball acting vertically down. or a horizontal force that maintains the motion, a force whose direction changes as the direction of motion changes, the weight of the ball and the horizontal force, the weight of the ball and force in the direction of motion. 
So which one is the right answer? So when you think about the forces, think about the agents. What agents are acting on that object? Yes, gravity is the agent that is pulling the ball down. Is there any other agent that is touching this object? Nothing is touching, right? So there is only one force, that is the weight. So that's the answer. So a steel beam hangs from a cable as the crane lifts the beam. What forces act on the beam? So you have, come on. Where is, here is a beam and it hangs on some rope. Okay. So what are the forces that act on the beam? Mm -hmm. Yeah, rope is the agent. That means whenever you have a rope, what force does the rope exert? We talked about that just a couple moments ago. Rope exerts which force? We have a bunch of forces. Tension. tension, yeah. So there is tension. And what else? There's also something pulling it down, so gravity. So we have tension and gravity. Okay, so a bobsledder pushes her sled across horizontal snow, get it going, then jumps in it. After she jumps in, the sled gradually slows to halt. What forces act on the sled just after she jumps in? So the sled is moving this way, but it's slowing down. So think about the agents here again. The long range force is provided by gravity. So gravity is weight. What is slowing down the object or this slid? What agent is slowing down the object? Yeah, kinetic friction. So F K. And there is no other agent here. Oh, by the way, there is also one more agent here. This surface is also the agent, which is providing the this upward normal force. Okay. Is there any other agent? Yeah, so those are the forces. So we have gravity, we have normal force, and kinetic friction. Okay, so um, how do we identify different forces? So we list the forces. Now how do we identify the forces acting on the objects? So there are a bunch of uh, rules here. Um, first thing is you need to identify the object of interest, okay? Or on what object you are applying the force. First thing is to, uh, to, to, to identify the object. Second is you draw a picture of the situation and then draw a closed curve around the object. That's an example later. And then you observe, you see what agents are touching the object at the boundary. Okay. And then you label all, label all the forces. And then you also identify if there is any long range force. Okay. So these are the rules. Now let me show you example. That will show how we apply these things. So these are the forces that we need to identify. <coughs> okay. So we have <coughs> general force. If you don't know which force, then you can just call it general force. Okay. We have uh, weight. We have spring force, tension, normal force, static friction, kinetic friction, drag, thrust. Okay. So how do we identify that? So here is an example. There is this. Uh, bungee jump, jumper hanging on a string uh, on a 
um, a rope. So first thing is identify the object under consideration, which is the bungee jumper here, and then draw the picture. So you are drawing the picture of this bungee jumping jumper hanging on its rope. Okay. And then draw this closed curve around this object. Fourth one is now locate what agents are touching the object at this boundary. So there is this agent touching the object at the boundary. Okay, tension is the a rope is the agent or this is the agent and this is touching the object at this boundary. And there is also this uh, weight pulling it down, okay, which is not actually touching because it's a long range force. And then you name and label each contact force. So this contact force is the tension, tension is due to the rope. And then also label or name the long range force. So that's the long range force. Okay. So we now see that there are two forces. One is this force and the other one is this force. Okay. That's how we identify the force, the forces exerted on the object. Let's see another example. <clears throat> so there is this skier moving uphill. So we, we want to know how many forces are acting on this object or this skier. So first you need to identify that this is the object under consideration okay? and then draw the picture of the situation and then draw a closed curve around this object or skier and then locate what agents are acting on the object. So here this rope or string or whatever this is yeah the rope is um, pulling the object and there is also this agent which is the surface okay so that's those are the agents and then you need to label the forces so this agent is exerting tension force label that and this agent is exerting the kinetic friction if the person is moving up then the kinetic friction would be pointing down so f sub k and then you also need to identify the long range force. In this case, the long range force is weight, which is pointing down. Okay, so we have tension, friction force, and weight. Okay, so now let's talk about um, how to calculate force. We saw how to identify forces, but we also need to know how do we measure force or calculate force. So to calculate force, we use Newton's second law. You have seen this in um, the virtual lab. So we know that acceleration is caused by force. So if you want to accelerate an object, the meaning of acceleration is, let's say an object is moving at two meters per second. So somehow you want to change the velocity from two meters per second to four meters per second okay, in one second time. So change, changing the object speed from one speed to another speed is what is called acceleration. Okay? Acceleration is changing speed. So in order to change the speed, what you need is a force. Okay? So force causes the acceleration. And acceleration is directly proportional to force. The bigger the force, more the acceleration you get. Okay? For example, if you have two boxes of same mass, M and M, you apply 10 Newton on this box and 20 Newton on this box, you, you will get twice as much acceleration in this case than this one. Okay? So if you get um, one meters per second squared acceleration here, then you'd get double acceleration here, two meters per second squared. That is what this is. Okay, acceleration is directly proportional to force. And also, acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. So you have a mass that is one kilogram and another mass that is two kilogram, and you apply same force on both the objects. So let's say you're applying 10 Newton on this one and 10 Newton on this one. 
So, if you have 1 meters per second squared acceleration produced here, then for the 2 kilogram, it would be just half of that. So, that would be 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So, bigger the mass, less is the acceleration, what is, which is uh, denoted by that, okay, inversely proportional. And if you combine these two, then you get this formula. Okay, acceleration is force over mass. So that's the Newton's second law. And it gives us a way to measure force. So force is the product of mass times acceleration. So, for example, let us look at a numerical problem, we will come to this later. So, here is an example, a constant force causes an object to accelerate at 4 meters per second squared. So, you have an object and you are applying some force and it causes acceleration of 4 meters per second squared what is the acceleration of an object with twice the mass of mass that experiences the same force okay so let's say you have twice as much mass as that one applying the same force what would be the acceleration would the acceleration be more or less than that for the smaller mass we just talked about that here acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Where is that here? Bigger the mass, smaller is the acceleration. Okay? If you double the mass, you reduce the acceleration by one half. So, apply that here. When you double the mass, you reduce the acceleration by one half. Right, so one half of two, uh, one half of four is two. Two meters per second squared. So let's look at this one. An object, when pushed with force F, has acceleration of. This produces an acceleration of two meters per second squared. Now twice, the force is applied. Okay, same same mass. We are not changing the mass. Okay, so m and m. Now this time we have twice as much force. What would be the acceleration in this case? Twice. Yeah. So exactly. So acceleration is directly proportional to force. Double the force. Double is the acceleration. So that will be four meters per second squared. Why is it? Because of the mass. Oh, okay. I thought like we are not changing the mass. Sorry for that. I didn't read this question. So we are also changing the mass, okay, not just force. So when you keep the f mass constant, it will be doubled. So that will be true. But we are also uh, increasing the mass by 4. It's doing that four times. So we have four times the mass. So force will double the acceleration, okay? But what will the mass do? Mass will reduce the acceleration by one fourth. So then the net effect would be one half. So the acceleration would be one half that of this acceleration because there are two effects here one is effect due to the doubling of force which doubles the acceleration and there is also effect due to increasing the mass or increasing the mass by four times which reduces the force uh, which reduces the acceleration by one fourth so the net effect is multiplying 
the two effects. So half of two meters per second squared is one. Okay. So let's look at this question. A basketball is released from rest in a stiff breeze directed to the right. In which direction does the ball accelerate? Down, uh huh. That's right. Uh, there is also okay. So down would be when there is no air. Okay, so you're right. So if there is no air, you can say the acceleration is down. But we are considering this drag force also, okay, or force due to the breeze. So let, let's draw the uh, this diagram here. So there is this force. So the breeze is in this direction, and the drag is opposite to that. Okay. So the ball is moving this way, and we know that drag force is always in opposite direction to the direction in which the ball moves. And there is this down fo force. So there are two forces here. So we need to think about the net force. Okay. So net force would be vector addition of these two forces. So the vector addition would be, you can use the, the, the parallelogram rule. So to find the net of two vectors, so you have one vector this way, another vector down here. So you want to find the net, net force, you draw a parallelogram or rectangle, and then draw a, 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 a diagonal. And this diagonal gives you the net fo force, okay? So that's the net force. And the acceleration is always pointing along the force. So this is very important thing. The direction of acceleration is always along the direction of force or net force. If this is the net force, then that's also the direction of the acceleration. Okay, and that's what the duration is. Okay. So that's that. Let me ask you one more question here, and then we are done. So an object on a rope is lowered at constant speed, which is true. So if there is no force due to the this um, rope, what will happen? So you don't have this rope, you've just let go of this thing. It will accelerate down, right? But something is preventing it from accelerating. Something is also holding it up. So that means we have two forces here. And in order for this object to be at constant speed, these two forces must be equal. This tension, sorry, this should be tension. Tension should be equal to the weight. Okay. So I should draw an arrow here with the same size as that of this one. Okay. So if it wasn't at a constant speed, that so if it is not at constant speed, let's say it is accelerating down, then this would be T would be smaller than W. If it is accelerating up, then this would be, tension would be greater than weight, okay? So T is greater than weight when this is accelerating up. When it is accelerating down, this W would be greater than T. This is accelerating down. And when there is no acceleration, they are equal, okay? Acceleration is zero. So which one is the right answer then? Yeah, so the rope tension equals to the weight of the object. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. We will continue this in the next part. Yeah, so quiz, and then you can try the homework for
Have you guys done homework four? Okay, and then I will be posting one new homework, which will be due next Friday. There's no worksheet this week. <laughs>